Hi guys, this is a quick reaction video to um, an essay that Hamza Tsvosis wrote, which is called Seven Reasons Why God is Worthy of Worship. Also, I have an essay on my website called Seven Reasons Why Allah is Worthy of Worship. If you explore those and then come back to us, and I'm more than okay. willing to have a discussion with you in a nice way. And I, I like the way you've come across now. Thank you very much for your presence, man. Now, he challenged me to do this in, in a stream when I uh, jumped on to ch have a chat with him. And I could have done this online while we were there, and he would have got off a lot more lightly. Now I've had time to do this. And the thing is that Sotsis has not updated anything in his line of reasoning or argumentation for the last 10 years. He's still using the same old stuff that he takes from the Christians, and throws in a couple of Arabic words, and then that's it. Now, the funny thing is that he uses arguments, things, claims that he, and, and this is the definition of a lie. He knows are wrong and he uses to deceive or mislead other people. Now, I've shown a lot of times that this is not an honest person. Now, I've tried a lot of times to tell him, listen, there's only one thing I want, and that is for people to stop lying. Now, if I go and I see what he does, he uses the old arguments and then all these done is add things like existential, transcendental, cognitive obscurity of the incoherent or empirically untestable and dissonant pretentiousness of supercilious commentary on the eponymous ideology, things like that. What have I just said? Nothing. I've just waffled. This is just word salad. And this is what Hamza Tsotsis does for 15 minutes. I watched it in his last stream. Uh, the same thing happens when, when he goes into the seven reasons why God is worthy of worship. He does not bring a lot to the table. He just presupposes that there's a God and that this God needs to be worshipped. I do not know why. He says that the purpose of our lives is to worship him and quotes a sentence in the Quran. But the Quran does not specify what worship is. And Hamza Tsotsis does not define it either. So then I did it, and you're welcome to, to go through my blog where I did this. I'll, I'll put the description, um, the, the link into the description box, and then you can see it there for yourself. Because to worship is to be devoted and full of admiration for, to have, you know, express feelings of adoration. And then, hang on, that is exactly what they are saying about Muhammad. So the funny thing is, and this is something that I found quite uncanny when I joined the script, that this is exactly what they were saying, and I pointed this out, that this is exactly what they're using to describe Muhammad. And they didn't like that, but they couldn't really say anything. So anyway, if I say there is a reason to worship a god, then I need to provide some sort of reasoning why this is something that we should be doing. Now, if I go and look at what, what Zorzis does, I mean, the thing is, he, I have shown that the Quran is like totally unreliable. Okay, it says, for example, that is, okay, from a logical point of view, I can, I can go from different perspectives. So from a logical point of view, um, I can see that it's, it says it's protected, preserved, guarded, unchanged, things like that. And yet, we see in the texts, in history, alterations, additions, corrections, updates, deletions, omissions and things like that. So we can see that it was written, destroyed, manipulated, modified, and it, some things were chosen, some things were burned. At the end of the day, it was compiled by humans. So that is what we have in reality. If I go and look at the Quran from a content perspective, I can see that we have the inheritance distribution error, which shows that there are mistakes in the Quran which are easy to demonstrate. And yet, Hamza Tzotze still says that this Quran was written by a God, and this is the difference now between the Christians, because they are able to say it was inspired, not taking it literally. Muslims do. Well, most of them do anyway. So he, what he says is, is quite weird, because all he manages to say is, God is worthy of worship by virtue of who he is. That's presupposing, nothing more. It's just saying, God is worthy of worship because he's there. But why, why is that a reason? That's not a reason. That's not telling me why this God is worthy of worship. Number two is, I mean, there's, there's seven points that, that he's saying. These are the reasons. The second one is God has created and sustained everything. 
Now, why does that present a reason for worship? Why? If, if God creates earthquakes uh, and, and, and uh, I don't know, a, a piece of land that I can use for agriculture, I'm the one cultivating it and then it gets destroyed by an earthquake. Why should I worship this God? There's no reason to do that. So just because he's created something, why would I worship that? I, I, when I was non-existent, I didn't ask anybody um, to create me. And when I'm dead, I also don't want to. And yet Muslims are telling me that I'm going to go to this place where I can only do two things, and, and that is to have sex with virgins and drink wine. I don't like either of those. Definitely not for eternity. So what does that have to do with anything? Why would I worship a God that is unjust, that is pernicious and cruel, and, and that does all sorts of things that I don't like? Then he says God provides us with immunerable favors. Why does that present a reason for worship? Why? What is the reason that I should worship somebody who does me a favor? And what kind of a favor is this? Is this that I am provided with um, just an unlimited amount of, of sex slaves? And this is a favor or what? Then he says, if we love ourselves, we must love God. What? Why? How is that a reason? This is a silly claim. Then number five, God is the loving and his love is the purest form of love. Well, even if I just accept it, and so what? I don't understand that if his love is the purest form of love, why should I worship this God? I mean, he can love whoever he wants. But why should I worship this God? Because he is the purest form of love. That doesn't follow, does it? The number six on the Hamza Thoughts list is worship is part of who we are. Now that's a false statement. It's, it's bar of any evidence, just a silly claim. I, worship is not part of who I am and it's not part of anyone. Muslims are indoctrinated and brainwashed into believing that, you know, praying and fasting and donating and running around a black stone and things like that, those are things of worship and this is something that they need to do. I don't. So it's not me. I don't quite understand why he is so obsessed with this and doesn't understand that he is making false claims. Then number seven, obeying God is the most rational thing to do. Oh my God, no, it's not. I mean, the, the Islamic God figure, and I made a short list, is vicious, violent, divisive, misogynistic, judgmental, brutal, narcissistic, incompetent, and thankfully non-existent. Because it is not the most rational thing to have a God in your life. It is not the most rational thing to obey a God. And obeying a God is not worshipping this God. If I obey the prison gods, I am not worshipping them. So there's a lot wrong with this. Now, the funny thing is that that thoughts is now, like he rambles on and on and on and on. Now, because now he explains each one of these seven items that I don't think require any kind of explanation. But he goes on for 10, 15 pages, I don't know for how long. And it's just a collection of emotions and unsubstantiated claims. And that is the level of this entire article or essay or whatever you want to call it. It's just useless apologetics. So I'm sorry, this entire endeavor is a failure and not worth following up on. Just the usual tired and desperate attempt at justifying a silly belief. And that is the end of this short comment. Thank you very much for your time. See you in the next video about whatever. Cheers and bye-bye for now.